And one of the difficult things about being a presenter, a preacher or a teacher on special occasions is how do I acknowledge and understand the special occasion uh, we can walk and chew gum, can we? Okay. How do I keep in line with the special occasion and still say something that is significantly important for the everyday life of the child of God? You see, if you take Easter next week, and, and thank you, uh, Jason, just stand. Uh, one of the most prolific young men coming along to take my place and everybody else's place who's my age, we thank God for him. Amen. God never leaves himself without a witness. Amen. Don't think because uh, you don't have it all and you ain't going to be here all the time. Ah, okay. So it's critical to understand that take Easter, for instance. Some people are coming to church on Easter just because it's Easter. And uh, they expect what we call an Easter message. But an Easter message that deals with the holiday or the significance of the day might not necessarily meet the need of the individual. So in a normal setting, I would simply address the fact that it is Palm Sunday and then preach something from a text that is totally different. But I'm looking at this in light of the spirit of the day. When I looked at this, I found that there is a lot of meat here that deals primarily with the contemporary environment, with the atmospheric situation that Christianity is now in. And so we pick up in verse, 20, uh, verse 1 of chapter 21. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, they were come to Bethphage, or as many of us would not put the PH, but says Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you. And straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her, loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. <laughs> and all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh up unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded, and brought the ass and the colt, uh, put on them their clothes, and they sat him thereon, and a very great multitude spread garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. No, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. All right. When you look at this in all of its splendiferous presentation and accolade of him coming, he is about to have his worst week. This is the beginning of what will be his worst week. And it is interesting that somehow those of us who give our lives to others 
in light of following Jesus. If any man is to come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Uh, do I need a subject? You'd like to have a subject? You no, know, you don't want the subject that I'm thinking about. <laughs> you remember when he said, I want to go get that donkey? And if they come and say anything to you, you tell them the Lord had need of them. Well, let me put it this way. The Lord has need of your donkey. I had to do that. I couldn't help myself. I could <laughs> he is about to have his last week. And oftentimes when you give your life for the people around you, and many of us complain about our strengths, oftentimes God has set you up in your family and in your household, in your neighborhood, and in your ministry. Not for self-aggrandizement, but God has set you in that place for you to be a blessing to others. But sometimes your worst week is their best blessing. I want you to see it now. He is about to have his worst week until it's called the passion but his worst week is what's going to deliver the world I wish somebody would understand me Ooh. his worst experiences will mean you and I will be saved. If he didn't have that week, we couldn't be in here today rejoicing and lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. It is significant then that he is following the messianic prophetic word from in one place Zechariah Another place, Ezekiel, and maybe I should read one or two of them, and another place, Isaiah. And he is coming into Jerusalem after the fashion of Zechariah 9 and 9, where he says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. It is prophetically declared that this would take place. And yet still, when we look at what is prophetically declared about the messianic move of Jesus Christ, the Jews still today have not accepted the fact that he is the Messiah. And yet still, he is following the prophetic word and working it to the very, very detail. So the question becomes, for those of us who are inquisitive enough, is this happening simply because of his supernatural omniscience or does he know the scripture and is he making it happen in a natural way? You see, there are sometimes God uses your intellect where you figure it out yourself based on your cognitive ability, intellectual ability to know how to move. But there are other times in your life when God bypasses your intellect and supernaturally puts you in place. I want to talk to somebody here. Oh, God have mercy. I was talking to a preacher last night and I told him, I said, I said, understand this. 
You don't want to be where God doesn't want you to be. Therefore, pushing yourself into a place that you want to be in where God does not want you to be cannot last very long. And when you begin to move by your own ingenuity, it ends up many times being more conspiratorial than it is anointing. I wish you'd understand. See, you can hire an administrator, but you can't hire anointing. If anointing doesn't come from God, oh, you can hire a genius, but you can't hire anointing. Because if God does not have his hand on you, nothing you do will work. And you will spend a lot of time fussing and being mean to people who God has his hand on. But you can't take God's hand off anybody by persecuting them, prosecuting them, or mistreating them. When God has his hand on you, you may have a bad week, but somebody's going to be blessed. Uh, I feel like shouting in here. Uh, I better behave myself. It's a critical thing here because there is something that was declared even from Zechariah. And that is he's coming on an ass and he's coming, the king is coming in meekness. So now we have to take a look at the word meek. Because oftentimes people think that meek means weak. Oh, I wish I could. Oh, I wish I could shout on that. I can't move. Uh, because I'm meek doesn't mean I'm weak. And it's difficult for the word pratos to be translated into English. But what the word means is, as best as we can say it, is you know that God knows your situation. You know that he knew it was coming. And because you know he know, knew, when you're blessed, you don't get too high. And when you're going through something, you don't get too low. Because that's meekness. Meekness is to have humility when you're blessed. And meekness is to have courage when you're going through. So the child of God isn't flipping and flopping, going up and down. One day you're mean, next day you're nice. One day you're hurt, next day. No, the child of God is moving smoothly. Oh, I feel like shouting here. The child of God isn't getting crazy when they're blessed. The child of God isn't losing their mind when they're being dis mistreated. Because the same people that are saying Hosea at the beginning of the week are going to be saying crucify him at the end of the week. Don't get carried away with folks praise. Because the same folk who are praising you today will be trying to walk on you tomorrow. Oh, I feel like shouting. Uh, give somebody a high five. Say, I need meekness. Uh, how might I describe meekness? Meekness to me is uh, the commercial where they had the cab. And they had the cab or the truck. And they had the wheels going over some tracks, like train tracks. They put some bulbs on the bottom, they put some bulbs on the top, and then they put a rod that is connected to the wheel between the bulbs. As the car would go forward, or the truck, or the vehicle, what would happen is every time the wheels would go up and down, it would break the bulbs on the top and the bottom because the wheels were jumping up and down.
But the cab, in the cab, they had the same bulbs higher up, and they had the same rod going through. Now, the bottom rod is breaking all the bulbs, but the rod on top is going through and not touching anything. What is the difference? Between the wheels that are breaking all the bulbs with that rod, and the rod that is not breaking any bulbs is a shock absorber and you see Jesus now in the meek person's life becomes their shock absorber so no matter how things are moving up and down and people are vacillating and hollering you're putting me through changes you ain't putting a child of God through changes where Jesus is the shock absorber because whatever the devil moves to shock God takes the shock and allows your life to be smooth. This is why he says, I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind Oh, I know you know your Bible. Amen. I'll keep you in perfect peace. Don't lose your mind over your blessing and don't lose your mind over people cursing you and make sure that when they come after you, when you get on your cross, you can say, Father, forgive them for them. Oh, they don't know who they messing with. I, I feel like having church up in here. Give somebody a high five and say, you don't know who I am. Amen. You know me but physically. You know me acquaintancely. But if you ever get in the spirit, you will see a spirit over here that cannot be broken. You got to get into the spirit to know who you sitting beside. Amen. I don't care how you look. I don't care how somebody's crying. I don't care how somebody looks like they're backed up and it looked like they can't make it. When you get in the spirit and you have a spiritual understanding, you will know it ain't what it look like. It is what it is. When I've got the power of the Holy Ghost, the victory shall be mine because I got a shock of... I feel like shouting here. Uh, when you look at the text, there are certain things you're going to have to ask yourself. Because if you notice now, people follow for different reasons. Oh, I got to deal with this. I was talking to a young man and he said and, and, and God has his hand on him, ain't no question. And it's really something when God is blessing you and you lay hands on somebody to get healed and somebody's hollering witchcraft. But then, don't lose your mind. Jesus healed somebody and they said this healing is by the power of Beelzebub Jesus how do you mistake the anointing on Jesus for something devilish that is not an objective comment that is a subjective comment which is predicated on the envy and the hatred that is in certain people let, let me let me say to you this I have been pastoring for a long time and even when God's anointing wasn't on me I knew who his anointing was on. Uh, can I say that again? Uh, talking to the young man, and God is using him mightily. And somebody said, witchcraft. And I said to him, don't take that to heart. And don't take your blessings to heart. 
stay focused. Stay calm. Because if you don't stay calm, you will seek to hurt who is hurting you. And you would have stepped out of your place. Because no child of God has ever been given by God the right to seek revenge. Uh, I, I wish I can talk to you here. I, I, I'm going to talk like Bishop Ulmer. I'm going to talk to the people over here. No child of God is ever expected to sit and plot to go against their enemies because God said you're out of place you're out of place because you're taking my place vengeance is mine I wish somebody would understand this give somebody a high five say keep your hands clean you don't don't put your hand on a knife don't put your hand on a gun don't put your mouth on somebody trying to destroy them because your hands are to be clapped to praise the Lord. Your feet are to dance to give God glory. Your mouth is to open up and praise him, not cuss somebody out, not try to destroy somebody with your lips. I heard James say, you can't run sweet and bitter water through the same through the same fountain it's either you saved or you're not and if you saved you ain't fighting nobody the battle is the Lord and here's what the here's what the Lord says when I get ready to move you better pray for them that despitefully use you because when I move I'll cut them off without remedy I feel like having church hair it's his worst week but you're blessed because of it. When the young man, he broke my heart because he said after they went after him, 70% of his congregation left. Mm -mm. Give some consideration then. So what Jesus is about to face, in spite of all of that, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Because when people follow for the loaves and the meat, they're not there because of their relationship with God. That's the problem in the church today is that there is no loyalty because they're not there for a relationship with God. Ooh. There is absolutely no way for you to have a prayer partner on this front row or any one of these rows and both of you have come together to have a relationship with God and that relationship is thriving and you find envy in them hatred in them plotting to bring you down when you have a relationship with God, somebody is close to you, but they aren't there for the reason you're there. I, oh, it's going to get deep here. I don't get deep. I, hey, in this group that is close to Jesus, that's going to make his week real bad is a fella named Judas. So while 
Jesus is getting the praise from the crowd. Judas is upset because he's not getting what he followed Jesus to get. You got to understand now. People who are near you, who seek to use you, when they don't get what they thought they could get from using you, they will turn around and betray you. They don't see value in supporting a vision. They only see value in getting something from the vision. Oh, you see, 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 Judas was not a part of Jesus' mission to save people. That's why he complained on everything. And when anything was done to bless Jesus, he was in the background complaining about what they could have used the money for other than to bless Jesus this way. Jesus said to his disciples one time, he said, this woman has come and served me. And you all are sitting around here looking at her funny when she has served me. She is blessing me and you can't stand it. Anybody who is in your midst, when God God is using you if they're a part of the vision that God has they will get behind the vision and they will be oh but if they're not in that vision and they're in there for what they can get if they don't get it watch out I don't want to upset you But in this week, Judas is going to have a meeting with the Sanhedrin Council. And Judas is going to sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. If you go to the Old Testament, the price of a broken slave. Mm -hmm. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor... Do you know what you have in your anointing? You can't sell your anointing for a piece of clothes. You can't sell your anointing for some man or some woman. You don't know what you have. When you're walking with Jesus and you're going to give him up for 30 pieces of silver. But here is the part that makes the weak even worse. And that is Judas never stopped being in the company. If you got a problem, leave. Since you don't like Jesus, he's not forcing you to be here. But Judas changed. He was following him. He made the deal. Then they said he kept on following so he could find an occasion against him. When did you change? You have some people shaking your hand who have already changed. You got some people Still shouting when you preach. Still receiving your blessing, eating at your table. And you got to ask the question, when did you change? You still act in the same way. You still jump in the same way. Still talk in the same way. You're still hugging me in the same way. But you have changed. 
And this is what makes his week the worst week. You see, when you look at the Lord's Supper, you look at the Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of them around the table. But that's not the biblical way. It was a triconium. And a triconium is the food is on a table in the middle and the triconium, one, two, three. They don't eat sitting down like this, as Leonardo da Vinci drew for you. They don't eat sitting down along a table like this. They eat laying against each other. Uh, uh, I want to talk to you now. How wicked the betrayal is, is that he's not sitting separate from Jesus. They're all lying and laying against each other. Then not only are you laying against me, eating my food, but you've switched. Oh, I feel like preaching now. Jesus was so lowly and so meek that when they came with the betrayal set up to get him, he was so much a part of everybody else that they would not have known who to grab. So what makes the weak even worse is when he says, the one that I kiss, betraying him with something that registers affection. How low can you get? That you're going to act towards me with affection. But the affection is to betray. How many people have come up close to you and come up close to you, come up close to you, come up close to you just to find something about you to destroy you? If you don't like me, leave me. Ooh, give somebody a high five. Say, what a week. I'm almost there. The power that is exhibited here is going to be exemplified at the end of the week. It's going to be on the cross. And the level of spiritual dynamics is going to ultimately be how you treat those who mistreat you. Oh, this is, this is, uh, I, I didn't mean to, to bother you so deeply. I have learned in walking with God that there is an expectation for you and me and I to be like Jesus not only in the Hosannas but how am I going to act and respond to the crucified. The old man is going to say, however I react is justified. But the new man is going to say, that ain't how Jesus acts. All right, now I'm going to take you to a type of Christ. 
And a type of Christ in the Old Testament in Genesis is Joseph. Joseph. And it's going to be so typical that you're going to understand this. That without his worst week, we wouldn't be saved. Without Joseph's brothers hating him, he'd have never got to the palace. I, I, oh, I, 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 I got to come down now. Oh, my time is up. But I got to, I, 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 I got to finish. You see, what God does is he uses whatever the climate is to bring about his will. God does not have to change the climate to bring about his will. There was nothing but hatred in Joseph's family. And what Jesus is about to do in chapter 21, that's going to change those Hosea's, Hosanna's, <laughs> hi Hosea, <laughs> and to crucify him is he's going to go to the very heart of their religiosity. And there's no greater hatred than when you start messing with somebody who thinks they know God. Whenever you present Jesus the way he's to be presented, everybody else who thinks they know him, they're coming after you. He was going to upset their temple. Sometimes our temples need to be upset. Need to shake them up. Because we've got so now that money is in the middle of the church. And when folk don't get rich like they've been promised, mm -hmm. <laughs> hatred in Joseph's family, here's why. You got Jacob with two wives and going with all the maids. Now, you know how baby mama's at. <laughs> Amen. Ain't no sense y'all looking like Alice in Wonderland. You, you, you know the reality of life. Wife versus baby mama. Amen. Do they have a, a sitcom on that yet? They don't have no reality show? It's coming, I guarantee you. Now, understand the boys. And if you really want to know how messed up the family was, all you got to do is hear what Jacob says about his sons at the end. When he was giving blessings and cursings to his sons. That's all you got to do. Here we're sitting around the table and we're eating and one boy says to the other boy, Reuben says to one of his brothers, uh, you ain't nothing but the maid's child. I ain't got to pass you nothing. You need to be serving me. And then he has this affinity for Joseph. And Joseph comes up talking about his dreams that subjects everybody. Who do you think you are? And if you check the scripture, the hatred went from one level to the other. But it took hatred because that's all God had to use. I got news for you. You got folk around you with envy. You got folk around you that dislike you. You got folk around you that maybe want to be you while they're trying to get rid of you. You got folk around you doing all kind of stuff. But if that's all God's got, that's what he'll use to raise you to another level. He don't
don't make them have to like you in order for you to go to another level. Oh God, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies and if you got the nerve to eat I got the nerve to serve you in front of who's ever it was his worst week I'm closing Why do you want Joseph in the palace? I want Joseph in the palace to protect Israel. Well, who is Israel? His brothers. I wish you'd get it. I wish you'd get it. If Joseph did not have the spiritual development that he should have, and he did have, he would be seeking revenge and he would have missed the mission. The reason I put you in there is to protect Israel, but Israel was the one who sold you out. There are times when God will have you to bless people who don't like you. And God will expect you to bless them anyway because you're bigger than their hatred. You're bigger than their envy. You're bigger than their malice. You're bigger. And so he did not come down from the cross Ooh. oh I wish I had some strength and he said father forgive them for they know not what they do and listen to this and I'm done my God my God why hast thou forsaken me I got news for you he wasn't asking his mother he wasn't asking John he couldn't ask Peter he was gone running hiding he, he, he wasn't asking anybody with all I've done for God how come I'm in this place as forsaken as he felt he was still talking to God never stop talking to God no matter how people are treating you never stop talking to God and here's the answer from God the reason I forsook you is to save the world and sometimes you feel forsaken but you're still blessing somebody to those of you who listen to this message the Lord is calling you now He's calling you not only to salvation, but he's calling you to have the kind of spirit and attitude that even under fire, evil don't, does not come out of you, but goodness. I want everybody in this house who has ex ever experienced being hurt, even in the church, I want you to get up out of your seat. Stand up where you are if you can't come down here. But somehow, when you've been burned by people who say they know God, and like the man, like Peter cut the man's ear off, call himself protecting Jesus. But faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. We don't need to cut anybody's ears off talking about how holy we are. We need their ears on. Thank you, Kevin, because faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. The next thing I saw was we spend a lot of time dealing with perpetrators, but we never heal the victims. The first thing Jesus did was put the man's ear back on. And I want your ears to go back on today. I want you to realize 
that in your darkest moment when people are treating you with such pecunity and disrespect you're still blessing somebody you're still blessing somebody I want you to bow your heads where you are Father I come in the name of Jesus and I want your healing to flow healing to flow and the reason I'm, I'm declaring it is because in spite of what these your children have gone through they're still walking into a church which means the healing has already begun I need you right now to double that anointing in my brother and my sister and comfort them by letting them know that as long as you're present in their life whatever comes will pass and I thank you now but to complete that healing I pray right now that you give each standing person forgiveness for whoever it was and whatever system brought them pain let your forgiveness now rest in them and if you feel delivered give God a praise right now if you feel like when you walk out of here <laughs> 